Hello guys, this is Modest Major here, bringing you some commentary over some Assassin's Creed Valhalla gameplay. Uh, today, I wanted to do a commentary topic that's a little bit similar to yesterday, where I talked about next-gen gaming. Uh, but more so, I wanted to talk about it in relation to the development side of things, uh, and in relation to the ongoing pandemic. Uh, now, I don't mean to, uh, you know, ease the... Uh, I I'm not one of these people who, like, want to lighten the effect of covid in terms of say you know oh it's actually pretty good in some ways blah 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 i'm definitely not trying to make that argument and i'm not trying to get all political on you i literally just want to isolate it purely to gaming uh, but for me i've had a little bit of a realization recently or uh some sort of um feelings about gameplay where i actually feel like this pandemic uh or at least the social effects of the pandemic are potentially having a boost on the sort of quality of games that we're having come out and i think could potentially teach us a few lessons about maybe how game development should work um you know what we've seen in game development for the longest time is three year cycles sometimes even two year cycles where a publisher is eager to get out a game because they want it to hit the sales figures they want it to hit you know the christmas drop or whatever it might be um, and we see these uh, game, game development cycles fitting a mold um, and the publishers being, you know, very strict on the development teams about it needing to come out then. And we see quite a few underbaked games. The other aspect of that is that sometimes you get a live service title. We all love a good live service, why don't we? Um, and I think what it means is that we either get underbaked games or we get games that are going to be delivered to us later on, even though we've just paid £50 for it, £60, you know, it's even £70 now for a uh, PS5 title. I believe that would make about $85 or $90 or something like that in the US. Um, and I think it's uh, very unbeneficial to the consumer. Now... Yeah, there's kind of a debate of two sides. Is it the publishers that are pushing for this to happen? Or is it fans' impatience that they're just profiting upon? You know, people get so hyped for the next sequel in a game. The trailers get people so hyped. Uh, and, you know, you've seen in stuff like Cyberpunk, when they've been delayed three times, the consumers get furious about it. They're like, oh, how dare you do this to me? Don't you know who I am? You know, this is my game. And I think it's an absolutely ridiculous stance to take, personally. Now, don't get me wrong. Do I see a uh, cyberpunk delay on my Twitter feed and get an absolute pit in my stomach? And I'm like, oh, not again. Of course I do. Uh, however, all I know is that this is potentially giving us a more refined and more sharp game. And at the end of the day, what might have been better is to just have, have had a five-year, six-year, whatever year. I mean, I think it already had a long development cycle. But it already had as long as it needed to from the start instead of trying to rush for a certain date. And I think what we're finding with uh, COVID and the pandemic is that uh, the publishers are not putting the pressure on as much. They understand the situation. They're being a little bit more sympathetic to the developers at work, thinking, well, you know, they're working in these new environments, uh, these new patterns. They've got new challenges to face. Um, that was kind of another aspect I wanted to talk about is what I think might be happening is people's creativity might be being fueled by the fact that they're working in such uh, unusual circumstances and maybe being away from these gigantic companies and just having room to have creative thought you know if you're a, uh, a game developer making quite a lot of money and now you get to sit at home and work on your own you know hours and your own schedule I, I mean obviously they're usually working so much that it's not usually their own hours but the hours are at their time in their home uh, they're in a comfortable environment. They don't have to worry about leaving somewhere. They don't have to be, you know, worried about feeling pressured as a part of this huge team. Maybe they're uh, sectioned off a little bit more. Maybe there's a little bit more uh, independent freedom. Um, and maybe there's not, like, publishers breathing down their necks as much. You know, I was looking at this game recently. I think it's called Immortals Phoenix Rising. I feel like this is a game on paper that would be absolutely trash. Uh, for one, it's Ubisoft. For two, it's a Ubisoft Breath of the Wild ripoff. Um, and, you know, on paper, I was like, this game should be bad, right? Uh, it should be a rushed Ubisoft project. You know, maybe a live service, not enough content, etc. And I'm looking for the trailers for it. And I'm like, 
this game looks pretty fire. Why does this game look so fire? This is Ubisoft. It shouldn't. And it was the same when I started seeing Valhalla. I was like, you know, is there a little bit more pristine going into this? Is there a little bit more expansiveness? The open world looks absolutely insane. Uh, I think, like, they've made really nice changes to the story. The story seems incredibly in-depth uh, and a lot more refined. And... Part of me is just wondering whether this pandemic is having more positive effects on the game development scene. Now, that, that's not to say that I believe that's the only way that can happen and that when the pandemic uh, ends, that that will be the end of, uh, you know, our little wave of really, really good, uh, you know, uh, first party titles. Um, you know, do I think Cyberpunk's going to be incredible? Yes. I mean, do I think it benefited uh, towards the end from having this added flexibility? What if we've got gotten a Cyberpunk uh, released, you know, six months ago or even a year ago, uh, without the delays because the publishers wanted it out by a certain time and shareholders wanted it out by a certain time. Uh, you know, who's to say we would be getting a good game as we might in a couple of months? You know, I'm watching these trailers coming up to release and the game looks like the scope is absolutely gigantic. It looks like it's topping The Witcher 3 and The Witcher 3 had enough scope as it was. Um, but you know, they had to do a lot of overworking and I think they're doing less overworking this time around towards the end. That might not be true, but, uh, I remember lining up the hours and thinking that the hours were worse for The Witcher 3. Um, not to mention just working from home probably makes it a little bit easier on those guys. Um, and, you know, I'm not saying that's right for them to be able to <laughs> overwork them. I think overworking needs to stop in the scene in general. Um, but the bottom line is, I think what's coming is that we're seeing a uh, evolution in the way that we should be looking at game design and thinking, you know, you know what, just because a movie might take X amount of hours to uh, make or uh, a book might take X amount of hours to make, you know, whatever, we've got a we've got a section off the video game industry it's its own industry and look at the facts and just say hey maybe we shouldn't be making you know games within three years two years i always thought it was ridiculous when they started saying oh we're gonna make cod every two years or we're gonna make assassin's creed now i know cod's a bit different because they had a uh different uh development team so they could pump it out like every single year but uh, nonetheless i just think there's this pressure to get a game out by a certain time and at the end of the day there's there's multiple factors that go into this for one it's an art form right games in my opinion i'll always stand by that there's so much that goes into it so much creativity that you know rushing creativity by a certain date sounds a bit dangerous uh not to mention the budget for these video games has increased so much uh the development time has increased so much the resources needed the teams the size of the teams like imagine during you know a pandemic organizing 300 people you know, even outside of a pandemic, organizing all those sub teams. What if something goes horribly wrong with one of the sub teams? Oh, well, the game's got to release in four months. We've got to chuck it out. Yeah, or you could just have a year delay or just wait, just wait longer. How many of the best games do we hear come out like God of War? Oh, yeah, God of War for PS4 was worked for like five years, 10 years, something like that. Um, you know, a lot of the best games that come out, they've just been completely in hiding and we barely even knew about it. You do the marketing a year before and it's fine. The publishers are getting so big, they could also afford to work on multiple uh, projects at once. And I think it just strikes me as greediness um, and cockiness, arrogance, uh, that they believe that they can just go back to those cycles and pump out games like nobody's tomorrow. It just, it feels like the way these games are coming out, it feels like the process was more relaxed. Whether or not that's true, it feels like there was more uh, interesting creativity. And I'm sure they're thinking outside the box a little bit more because of the nature of how weird a situation COVID is in the first place anyway. You know, this is the first time these people will be working from home and navigating Skype calls. But, you know, sometimes that adds to that excitement. You're breaking new frontiers. Uh, you know, you're crossing boundaries that you never thought you would have to um, and reaching these targets in a completely different way. I, I can honestly say that if I were to look at game development and think of, you know, being in my own house and my own PC and the own setup that I'm so used to and love uh, and working from there, I'd probably be, you know, more uh, into the process than I would working at some stuffy studio, uh, you know, working with these teams that I'm forced to work with. Like, it feels a lot less relaxed in that sort of sense. And I think relaxed is what you need in a game development environment. It's a little bit different to, like, a marketing project where you want energy, you want spark. Um, you know, of course, those things help in game development, but sometimes you need to take a step back and find uh, perspective and find uh, insight to creativity uh, more so than you need to find this, uh, you know, rush of fucking ideas and just spamming stuff on the page and getting ideas forced out the door. You know, I don't think that sort of approach helps as much uh, for gaming. 
Um, and it's really interesting to see the psychology of game designing shifting as COVID is happening. Uh, my hope is just that they take a serious uh, step back and say, hey, you know, maybe there's something we can learn from this. Maybe, you know, the idea of these games being allowed to be delayed and allowed to be improved might be a good thing in the long run. Maybe we don't just shove the games out the doorstep. Uh, I, I struggle to believe that they can't handle one more year of time off. Um, it's just the shareholders having this like urgency and the sense of having stuff out there. But if you don't hear from a developer or publisher for a while, all it does is build up hype in the best way possible. And then when the game comes and it's been fully worked on and fully structured, you know, Nintendo is doing the same things. And I can guarantee you when we see stuff like Breath of the Wild 2 and Metroid, I reckon the conditions in which they're being worked in will actually help those games thrive and they'll come out and they'll just be these gigantic projects. You know, Breath of the Wild 2 might have been releasing, you know, closer to last year or mid last year. We haven't heard anything for a really long time and I think that's unusual. Um, and I'm hoping that it's an all around good thing and that more surprises will be you know wrapped uh up for us um uh, that's just my opinion on it i had that thought cross my mind the other day and uh i just i just found it quite interesting to uh muse on i guess but let me know in the comments if you guys kind of agree if you have other examples of games that you think uh, are benefiting from covid or examples where you don't think they are and you think i'm a liar um uh, i'd be curious to see your guys take anyway I've been Modest Major. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Peace.